Kasi East MP, Bob Wawino. He too, calling it like he sees it. This is the Young Turks after all, the next generation. First time MPs, yes, they're calling it like they see it without fear or favor. Right, Moha? I mean, you know, p people are afraid of the truth for the most part. Mm -hmm. People are afraid of the truth. And in this day and age, when you have bloggers and armchair journalists and people who think they can get on their phone and they're experts... I mean, it's sad. It's very sad. It's sad. It's very sad. Very sad. But you see, they are doing it because the media has failed. People don't believe anymore in the media because they feel like the media is lying to us. Mm. So what are they doing? They are rushing to the social media. And uh, as much as some of them are damaging, but I must recommend also others who are doing great stuff by, you know, telling the truth. But apart from, you know, you don't need to attack somebody. You need to just tell the truth, the facts, that's it. If you don't have the facts, stop uh, the hula baloos. So there is a problem, both on social media and uh, the media itself. But you see, those good old days, people will go home early to watch news. Yeah. If you are in a village, you will have your radio. You know, upper Karibuna Kichwa, you are just listening to 7 p.m. news. Mm -hmm. And then it's over, you understand how the, the country goes on. Because news was valued during those days, because it was factual. You know, it was a calling for journalists. They loved it, and they did it with all the passion. And that's why people used to listen to news yeah. d during those days. Yeah. But nowadays, watching TV is another case of, you know, you are adding more stress because every time you go there, they they don't fight for what you want. They don't tell you. I, I want a media that pushes an agenda. Let's say if it's about health, you push it properly until the person who is in charge listens to, to the voice of the people because there's no power like people's power. They want the price of Unga to go down, push it like it's none of your business because we want that Unga to be down for the people to eat and sleep with a full tummy. Yeah. If they do that, but if me and Babu, we fight in parliament, we disagree on something when we fight, and you put it from Monday to Friday. Yeah. Becomes crazy. Then it Actually, becomes you, when you fought on Monday, over yeah. a very small thing. Yes, we are still on Friday. Saturday, yeah. we are still on. Sunday, yeah. we are still on. <laughs> Actually, yeah. bloggers, Jeff, are setting the agenda for the media industry. Nowadays, when anything happens, the blog spots picks it. They call themselves the uh, the keyboard warriors mm. or the online goons. Mm -hmm. They really invade social media. Some of them are proper. Some of them are passing out very disparaging news, news that is stale, news that does not make sense. But they still set an agenda for the media industry. How do you deal with it, Babu? Because you, you've been a subject actually, of... Ac actually, it has to go back to the, uh, to the media industry. People have to be serious. People must be objective. And people must ignore certain news that are defamatory, certain news that are not making sense. And we concentrate on issues, how a Mamamboga can be helped in the slums, how water is missing in the Mbakasi East, how roads should be constructed to Kenyans in the whole nation, how employment opportunities can be created, just the way Moa said, how health sector yep. can be improved but people out there don't care about that they want to know babu it's, it's not about how what they care about and what they don't care about yeah. care about it's about being given direction this is what we want as a nation we want to develop the the schools this is the agenda we want to develop this this is the agenda this is the news for the entertainment industry that's what we should be picking up but when the media is hearing uh, which lay queen Babu was with. Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. they want to put it, they even want to destroy my family yeah. or any other person's family. Yeah. Just because they're malicious. They pick the news from the bloggers. When something small happens, it is let news, me, breaking me, news. Let me give you How an example. How can you bring breaking news, something which example. is dead? I was really scared the other day when the PS was arrested. Uh, Omolo. Omolo. Uh, Omolo. Yeah. And I could see the trend both on social media and the media itself. Mm. Instead of saying that the PS has been arrested because of A, B, C, D, they wanted to unveil her tribe. Right. So the debate on their social media was the tribe of PS Omolo. And this is very dangerous because tomorrow it will be Muhammad Ali. It won't be about Muhammad Ali himself, but you'll want to drag my tribe in. You want to drag a lot of things that doesn't make it. When somebody goes to steal, you don't steal with your tribe, you steal alone. Why do we talk about the tribe of somebody. You see somebody asking, is he a Kikuyu? Mm. I knew. Mm. Is he a Kaleji? <laughs> I knew. Mm. Is he a Luo? I knew. Yeah. This is very sad. 
it is very sad jeff we don't have a common goal common goal this country i think we are something bad is going to happen in this country mm -hmm. because even the voters themselves they need to start discussing this issue they need to start they, they need to understand how these politics are being run because and i'm sure you will come to the politics you will ask something about the yes, politics I because am, yeah. i want to tell you something okay. now that i'm in that house Go on. so people should understand that not everything that they are being told by politician is right because sometimes the politicians take advantage <coughs> when i was outside campaigning mm. and when i came into parliament i thought i'll find uh, it's like a, there is a buffer zone that you believe this side NASA this side. Mm. The way we are seeing it outside is the way we are seeing it is, uh, inside. But when I came in, my friend, I was a little bit shocked mm. because I could see this guy with this guy. They keep on uh, attacking each other on TV, but they are drinking tea together. They are laughing and... Uh, Pamoja. Pamoja. Mm. Best of friends. Best of friends. So when I go d out there and I'm wondering what's wrong with our people, why should we always speak for you? Why can't you stand and make decision? And I want to thank Nyali people because they stood up and made a decision. They made a decision not choosing the party, but choosing that person. But when you see these two together, Moha, mm. what, does that say, you know what? Maybe I got into this, maybe I'm in the wrong house. People being together is a good thing. And then outside they're fighting. Yeah, the Bible, the Quran, the good books encourage that we should love one another. You should love your neighbors, you love but yourself. They're being but this love, yeah. this love is in, in, in parliament because we have agreed as politicians to feed them what they want to hear and people outside there want to hear bad things for example if i build a school somebody will ask me ah tunashukuru umejenga shule lakini tutakula shule because it is a, it is something that was set since 1963 in nyali constituency jeff and it hurts me so much a population of 103000 voters by the time i came in as a member of parliament they only had two government high school Nyali. In Nyali. One is a day school, one is a border, but it is for physically handicapped people. Two, a population of 103,000. And I was wondering, where do these people invest? If you go to Central, if you go to Rift, if you go to Nyanza, people, the parents are investing in education. In Mombasa, we are not investing in education. We are investing in politics of popularity. We are investing on, you know, it's a wave that we say, this is the way we go, but you don't put that foundation. So I was asking myself, okay, this young man has gone to school from class one to eight. He has finished. He wants to go to form one. Where does he go? There are only two. One is a day school. It can't fit. Where do they go? They go nowhere. They go to Chiumira, yeah. smoke bank, yeah. qualify Plus. to, you know, cocaine, heroin, Madawa. and then become criminals, shot down by police. That's it. Kill them before they grow. Kill the children of the poor before they grow. Deny them education mm. so that you can kill them properly. Babu, have you experienced the same in Embakasi East? I, I think the problem is just the same because the, the poverty level in the nation, Jeff, is, is so low. So I think the same mentality. Uh, we as politicians in this nation, we should act as a unifying factor to our constituents, to the people of Kenya, instead of dividing them. And that's why I think I, I'll still embrace the handshake because the, with the handshake, I know DVC politics will end. Inclusivity will be brought in. But isn't that just temporary, Babu? Is it temporary? L let me tell you, Jeff. We should make use of this handshake. Let us take advantage of this handshake. Let us not have the mentality that when something is done, it is temporary. Let us say that this, uh, this thing, we want to make it be a permanent solution. Because we built a nation, and a nation that we built, we can destroy it any minute. And we need not to destroy it, because there are people who are there before us, there are people, we are there, we are here, and there are people who are coming after us. Therefore, we need to unite as leaders and unite our people. For example, Babo Winnie and Bakasi's constituency. Why would I deny uh, Akikuyu Basari? Because Akikuyu belonged to Jubilee Party. Mm. Why must I punish the child? Because the parent belongs to a different party. Mm. As a leader, we need to unite them because a leader unites all and a leader works for all. For those who voted for him, for those who never voted for him. That's why we as leaders, we need not to play with the interest of the Kenyan citizens and also the Kenyan citizens. There's a notion and there's a norm. When you, when Babu lives here, gets into a slum, Babu na to the way Moa said, uh, what will you leave us with? Yeah. You need to give us something. Mm. We need to 
start rethinking how we are going to live so that we can grow for long term. If Babu comes and gives you 100 shillings or 1,000 shillings, that will not change your life in the foreseeable future. How do but we if change Babu, that, Babu comes do we change with that? projects by the in way, the constituency... By the way, when you two drive out tonight after the show, when you get to the gate, you'll find your people waiting for you. You know that? Yes. They'll be waiting. Hey, Mwashimua, tatuwa Yeah. That, that's 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 the that's the norm that we should get rid of and we as leaders we should stand strong and tell our constituent that this money that you're having now this money will never help you in future but i should show you how to fish instead of giving you that fish i should show you the projects that will make you grow in the foreseeable future we should take you for vocational training institutions whereby you learn matter skills some should be carpenters some should be electricians uh, some should be tailors and various fields. If at all they can't fit there, then there are projects that can earn income. We have uh, youth empowerment uh, using the, the defunct NYS. We have women empowerment doing nothing. These, these, these organizations must fund women, must fund youth so that youth can start businesses, mm. so that they can uh, improve their living standards. Okay, let's switch gears, gentlemen, and talk 2022. We have to because, you know, you got, it's, we're four years away. Uh, you And Mo, you, Moha, you just said something's, something's bad's going to happen. And you, know, you, don't, you, don't, you just didn't say that out of the top of your head. You know, you are a seasoned journalist. You can see things, and hopefully not on this one, but you see things. 2022, man, I mean, are we, are we, are we, are we moving forward at all? As a country, we don't want to elect good people. In 2013, you know, we talk about signal. Kenyans were given the signal in 2013. There was a lady by the name of Mother Karua. If you ask me, she was the best candidate. In 2013? Yeah, she was very clean, iron lady, feared, and a no-nonsense woman. She was the best candidate for this country. But people thought that she doesn't belong to the party that they want. She was technically killed. Dida. People <laughs> saw Dida as a joker. Yes. But he's a God-fearing man. Mm. He was preaching and making people understand. But people were just consuming what he said and laughing. He said Dida is a very funny yeah. man. He's a comedian. Because he's a comedian. Because these two people spoke the truth, but we refused. Look at the setting. Now that each and everyone is fighting, you know, all the politicians now fighting each other. Uh, Raila, Uhuru, Ruto, all of them now are fighting. Mudavadi, Kalonzo, everybody is looking for a space. In 2007, all these guys were buddies. During the, uh, was it Pentagon? Yes, to, Pentagon. Yeah, the Pentagon. Uh, all of them were in one party. Yeah. Ruto, was, Ruto was a hero. Correct. In 2007. He was like number two. He was number two. Very powerful. He fought. He defended ODM in 2000. He was a great man. Something happened on the way. He became another person. Cast. Same to Kalonzo Musioka. He was a good man. But he went and took the position of the vice president. Mm -hmm. He was called a, met a water. A watermelon. He was hated by everybody. But we can see the same, same people that we are talking about. Mudavadi, they say that he was given money. I don't know where he was given. He formed another party. Yeah. He was, people say that he was just there to scatter the votes. He was hated. Wetangula, he had his own issue with Tokyo Embassy. You know, all these people. Balala was there. Charity Ngilu was there mm -hmm. in Pentagon. Mm -hmm. But it reached to a point that everybody decided to go his or her way. If today somebody will stand up and say Ruto is a good man, everybody will follow. If today somebody will stand up and say Raila is a good man, everybody will follow. If today somebody will stand up and say who is a good person, everybody will follow. Now, politics of 2022, I am in that house. Mm. I know better than those who are outside, mm. and I can see how the game is being played. Politics in Kenya is a game of betrayal. Everybody is hiding his final card. We have a deal, we talk, we smile. You can look at all the mem memorandum of understanding during the Kibaki and Raila. It was not honored. Mm. You can see everything that goes on in this country. The MOUs that we are talking about since independence. Now, this is it. 2022, there will be never a son of a poor person on the ballot because we don't believe in ourselves. We believe in party and tribe. And we've been taught in a way that if this tribe
comes to power, they will kill this tribe. Mm. So that is the mentality. 2022, there are only like two people that are known right now will run. That is Gideon Moy and William Ruto, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Mm. And Baba? Or oh, he's not in Parliament? I, I don't know whether, whether Baba will run. But I don't know whether he will run or not. If he runs, then we'll, we'll have three candidates. But this is how the game is being played right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Let's say the two people that we are having, Gideon Moy and, uh, William Ruto. and William Ruto. Because in Central, we don't have a candidate. Right. That is clear. Mm. So Central Province must look for somebody who will listen to their interests. The other Rift will do the same. Nyanza will do the same. Because it's all about the interests. So if you have these two people on the ballot, and with all due respect, Gideon Moy is a friend of mine. I respect him. I've worked in his, in his father's company, Standard Group, for more than a decade. He's a good man. But Gideon is nobody without the name Moy. If you remove Moy from Gideon, then there is no Gideon. But Gideon, people know him as the son of the former president, Daniel Torotich Arap Moy. Now, we want to take these two gentlemen to ballot. I'll have to look at Gideon, first of all. This is Gideon Moy. He wants to be. Who is Gideon? Because he's riding on the name of Moy, that's how he will known. Now, take Gideon to Wajia. My aunties, my mothers and sisters in Wajia, my brothers, will remember the Wagala massacre because of the name Moy. Moy. Mm -hmm. Take Gideon to Nyanza. The people from Nyanza will remember the name Moy because of the likes of Robert Ouko who was killed and thrown in Gotalila. They will remember Jaramogi, what he went through. They will remember Raila Odinga, who was jailed and put in prison for 8 to 12 years. He never attended his mother's burial. They won't forget. Take Gideon Moy to Mombasa coast region. The people there will hear, Moy, Mtotoa Moy, they will remember the Kayabombo. They will remember that Moy ruled for more than 24 years in this country. And they'll remember everything that happened within this period. Whether he did it or his people did it, they won't want to know. They'll remember all this. People are saying that Gideon Moy will cut off the votes in Rift Valley. Mm. There is no rift in the north. Because if you take Gideon Moy in Rift Valley, then the people from Rift Valley must decide to give us a ceremonial president or the real president. And who is the real president? Because they have two candidates. Who's the real president? There's William Ruto and there is... But uh, you just said the son of a poor person can't be president. No, no, I'm just giving you an example oh. of the two. So okay. the people of the Rift will decide to give us, between William Ruto and Gideon Moy, to give us a ceremonial president or the real president. But, me, but look, people could say this is the new Moy, you know, it's, it's like Uhuru, Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. Not yep. just the son of a president, but, you know, he appealed to the people. He was different. He appealed. Jeff, I he wasn't uh, it, it will take time Jeff, to, to sell himself. Eh? Jeff, for example, Jeff, today you declare you want to run for a president in this country. Good Lord. People will laugh at you. Yes, they will. They will say you are a madman. <laughs> you are high on something. And that is the problem. Yeah. Because Kenyans don't want the right person for the right seat. Kenyans will always want the wrong person on the wrong seat. So if you talk about 2022, you have only two options. Because if you are given the right option, you will refuse. Mm. But if we are given these two options, who will you vote for? That is the question. Bobby. Jeff, I think uh, I'm of a different uh, opinion about mm -hmm. 2022 elections. Because I, 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 I know, and I was at the center of everything, when 2017 elections were done, <coughs> we saw what happened, mm. we saw how people were killed, and we don't want a repeat of the same. In 2022, Jeff, we must clean the nation. We must clean our house before we reach 2022. Otherwise, we might have a nation that is not a nation. Yeah. We might have a ship that is uh, reaching the dock, but at least it's already broken. Jeff, I believe that for us to clean this nation, there are certain issues that must be looked into. One, matters corruption. We may not reach 2022 if corruption escalates at the rate by which it's going. Two, Negative ethnicity. Mm. When the nation is polarized and says that our president must be an Ogiek, our president must be a Maasai, our president must be a Luo or a Kikuyu or a Kalenjin, then we are not going to reach 2022. There will be a repeat of what 
happened in 2017 and partly in 2018. Mm. Inclusivity. For us to reach 2022 safely, there must be inclusivity. So that at least people get opportunity to serve this nation better. And how will we achieve this? Jeff, first of all, before I discuss about the issue of inclusivity, the issues of the cabinet secretaries being technocrats, I'm against it completely because these people, they do not understand the plight, the challenges that the normal Kenyan citizens are facing. Mm. These things should go back to the member of parliament who walk on the ground, who if they asked by a mamamboga that I lack water, they know. I lack food, they know. But not a person who comes from the United States or the United Kingdom, comes to Kenya, is made a cabinet secretary, does not understand the interest and the challenges that Kenyan citizens are facing, those people will never deliver. So that must be changed. And for us to change this, when we come back to inclusivity, then we must amend the constitution. Once we amend the constitution to include everybody, so that the Kikuyu is, who is crying that they are not included in the government, at least they have something in it, they will be proud. The lawyer will say that it was all lost because they, what we have now is the winner takes it all and the loser loses it all. So by the end of the day, that breaks the nation and we are going back to a repeat of what happened. It happened in 2007 and it happened partly in 2013. It happened in 2017, which means that if we don't clean the house, it will happen in 2022. When it comes to the candidates who are contesting, I will not talk about it. <coughs> Anybody is, is allowed to contest mm. at whichever age and to lead this nation. Even Baba. So far, even if Babu decides today. Not Babu. Even, Baba. even if Babu decides today. Baba has a right to, to contest. I, I disagree. A, constitutionally, he has a right to contest because it is his constitutional right. So if, if he wants to contest, he will contest. Right. If Babu wants to contest, and I'm saddened by my brother, Honorable Moa, mm. not saying that Babu might also be decide to be the president mm -hmm. in 2022. Yeah. So if anybody wants to contest, let those people be given an opportunity. This nation is not just about two people. It's not just about uh, Deputy President or Gideon Moy. Because if we go that direction, then we are also losing it. And I believe that what I can do is to ask God for the wisdom so mm. that Kenyans can be able to make decisions yeah. that are right, that are going to lead them Babu, we to don't Canaan. Need, we don't listen to God, you know that. We don't. It's important, Jeff. We, we think we're too important. Maybe it's you. We don't worship. We don't listen to God. Yeah, we don't worship. And the issue As of, a nation, uh, Jeff. I'll, I'll disagree with uh, my brother here mm. on the issue of amendment of the constitution. We just came from the election the other day. A lot of people died. There was chaos in this country. We are... Uh, we, we are just now starting up to pick up the pieces and move forward. And if you bring this thing of referendum in it, then you will create more pressure, you know, to the people. Let's go to the election. Whoever who takes it, we now go for, for, for a referendum and uh, do those amendments that we want. It's a little bit too early. I think the best referendum is to now serve the people, give them hospital, give them uh, schools. This is the best gift that we can do to the people. Yeah. But if you, we are just from politics, you want to do this. And th these things of referendum, it's not about Wanjiko. It's not about that, Mama. It's about it's yourself. It's about three or four people who want to create some, you know. Post but but, but you, see, you see, Jeff, I will, I will differ with my brother because uh, politics defines the economy of a nation and the economy of a nation is defined by the political activities mm. in a nation. Mm. When there is war, the Wanjiku suffers. When mm. there is peace, the Wanjiku can do business, they can pay taxes, yeah. and they are okay. Therefore, politics defines a nation. Monica, do you have tweets? Should we look at them? Or shall we continue hearing this stuff? <laughs> ah, yeah. Gentlemen, let's look at the tweets. Saimua Melala Ah, yeah. Rosma Sabur, he say, JK Live, Moha hitting the nail on the head about media. Indeed, some have succumbed to politics and propaganda. Uh, David Mayo, you say, the show is hot, Jeff. I like their objectivity and articulation. Very good. <laughs> Ruth Mwai, wish we had 10 Muhammad Ali's in this country and especially in the political divide. He is so passionate about fighting corruption in this country and very good in articulating issues, calling it as it is, no fear. Good stuff. 
Jogol Letters. Is that his name, Jogol Letters? <laughs> My Shibiwa Babu Wino, having been a student leader, how do you plan to fight for the discontinued university students? There are many out there suffering in shame and silence. What does he mean for the discontinued? I think uh, there are some students across the nation in uh, public universities and colleges who some were suspended, some are expelled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, this thing I'll take it to the education committee to ensure that these students are returned to the university because education is a constitutional right. These students are returned to the university so that they can pursue their education. Remember, if you close the gate of a school, you open the gate of a prison. What they if they've already gone, Babu? What if, what if they've Even given if up hope? There is nothing like that, Jeff. Let them be given an opportunity. Let these students be looked for. For that person to tweet, it means that there are people who communicated to okay. him or her. Maybe he's so one of that them. Maybe he's, he's one, one of them. them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can't see this properly. What's that? Bud Budhia, Budhia, yeah? yeah. Something Budhia. I'm glad we have such young Turks in the parliament. Let them walk the talk now. Okay. So, okay, these are text messages now, SMSs. Faisal Lekalov from Voy. Moha, you fought against corruption fiercely. Please don't stop. We look up to you. Babu, you have been a champion for youth at uni. Please don't forget us. Messages all the way for as far as Voy. Concerned residents, Honorable Babu, please sort <laughs> out road at Don Home near Total Petrol Station and Tasia area and Utawala. Uh, Jeff, the, the sole role of a member of parliament is not to construct the roads, but he can facilitate because there is Kera, there is Kura, there is uh, the county government, there is Kenha, and there is the national government. And I believe that uh, uh, the roads, so far we've constructed eight. There is the new Donom Road that has already been constructed, and uh, we have the road between Tel Aviv and, um, and um, Tel Aviv, all the way going between Feather and Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. We have Utawala Ring Road under construction. We have a road between Gate B to Kwandege, then moving from Kwandege all the way to Riverbank, already constructed. So I believe that I will put more pressure to Kera, to Kura, so that all these roads are constructed because it is a genuine concern. Okay. Is that it? Is that it, Monica? Okay. Uh, gentlemen, I am left with a lot of uh, despondency, if that you can call it that. It, that there's very little hope for the future. And I, w I thought I could come out of this interview thinking, you know what? These guys, they've given me hope. Now I'm going to give you a chance as we wind up. Babu, start with you. Looking forward. Is there hope? Jeff, I believe there is hope because uh, this nation was built at some particular point and it has never collapsed. And I believe that we as Kenyan citizens, no one person can fight and achieve better results. But we as Kenyan citizens, let's come together. Let's fight together. Let's lay the, this, this giant called corruption. Let's end negative ethnicity. When I see you, Jeff, I should see a Kenyan citizen, I should not see a Kikuyu. When you see me, you should not see a Luo, but you should see a prosperous and prospering Kenyan citizen. And I believe that if we unite as Kenyans, there is hope. That's why as Babu Owino still has hope that in 2022, he can vie for something else and get it. In 2027, I still have hope that I can vie for something and get it because I never lose the sight of a gazelle for a dashing squirrel. And I believe that if I have hope, you as a Kenyan citizen, you should have hope. Because from where I was raised, from the dust, from my mom selling changa, to where I am, then it means that at least there's something being done and there is great hope for this nation. Mm. Absolutely. All right, Moha, you get the last word. Uh, there is hope if you want. As Kenyans, if you want, there is hope. But if you don't want, there is no hope. First of all, I would like to tell Kenyans to give us time. Mm -hmm. Babu has just came out of his petition the other day and won his elections. I don't know whether they are going to take him to Supreme Court. I won the High Court. I've been taken to Court of, uh, Court of Appeal in Malindi. I think I'll do my submission on 4th and then uh, we'll wait for the ruling. I don't know if we'll go to the Supreme. So we've been running up and down because uh, of these court issues and we, we are not settled yet. We are 
we are coming in trying to understand how things are working. We are not expert in parliament. We are just young members of parliament who believe in ideology and we want to be in that parliament to change their lives. I told people I never wanted to be a politician, but I'm coming in to fix my country. And that is my number one uh, duty. For the civil society, they know a lot of things. They shouldn't abuse us. They shouldn't, they need to guide us. We are very young, we are first timers. They need to guide us. Look at the health debate that I brought, the motion that I brought in parliament. I sat down with the doctors. They took, me th they took me through the journey and they showed me why it's necessary for us to have these things. And I could listen and understand them. For the civil society, they will do these demos on the streets every day. The other day they came and did a demo outside parliament. And I came out of my car because I wanted to listen to them and I wanted to take that petition. But what happened? They just shouted, you are an MP, so you know, you don't even understand how people think in this country. That everybody is an MP now, everybody is a thug, everybody, because I was uh, seen with the Ruto uh, in Chiruto's chopper. Mm. By the way, I have been riding on choppers even before coming to parliament. I have been covering this country. Like <laughs> on choppers. Uh, on choppers. See like Ruto too. See, oh, so you at at Ruto, if you talk to Ruto, you are being bought. Hey, share the loot banner. Share the new. Why do we have this perception? Ruto is the deputy president of this country. Uru Kenyatta is the president of this country. When I hosted Uru Kenyatta in Kongoya Market in uh, Nyali, I was called names. But hey, this is the president of the Republic of Kenya. I can't play those stupid politics of popularity uh, to be seen that I'm against Uhuru. He is the president. You must respect that. Absolutely. You are the member of parliament. You are a leader now. You must you know, show lead by example. So there is this perception that uh, if you talk to somebody, you've been bought. If you, if you talk to another person, there's something that has happened. So I'm calling upon the civil society. Sit down with young members of parliament. We are very many in that house. If there is something that you think is not right, and perhaps we don't understand those things better, sit down with us. Make us understand so that we can be able to table these issues. Let us not come and do the demos every day and come, you know, abuse people, yeah. tell people they are pigs, throw yeah. something. And it won't work that sure. way. We must have a common goal. Civil society, Kenyans in general, we must vote for people who will guide us, people who will help us, mm. people who will listen to us. Okay. And that is the only way that we can say we, we can change this country. Absolutely. But Jam in the meantime, yeah. it's a quote to Shamba Lawanyama. Yeah, because the voters don't want to vote for that person. Mm. They want to vote for party. Absolutely. You see somebody ask you, when I was campaigning, somebody asks you that Kwanza Kabla Ujaza Kuongea Uko Chamagani. It's it's a time bomb. It's it's crazy. George and Orwell's 1984. Yes, yes. And you have skukido Jeff. We've done. I've just come with a small piece of paper here of what I've done in Nyali constituency alone. No, sir, another time. Yes. Atuna, atuna, sir. Just yeah, a small uh, eight months. Atuna, but to me, fanya mambo ya jambo. Fanya mambo poa. Yeah. We'll have to come back and talk some more. All right. Mwashimi wa Muhammad Ali. Mwashimi wa Babo Wino. Thanks so much for your time. And you're That's not good. getting young. You're yes, not sir. getting old, eh? You're all time getting young. What Serious? are you taking? Yeah. Kweli? Bana we ringa. Ah. Uh, Unakatu kijana every day. Unakula nini, man? Eh? Uh, ni mungu tu. Ni mungu. <laughs> Thanks so much for being a part of the show. Folks, keep tweeting. At Kwenanga Jeff, at Susan TV Kenya, with the hashtag JK Live. Tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., Jeff and Jalas on Hot 96. Join us. Thank you so much for being a part of this show. Yes, these are the conversations we need to have. Whether we like it or not, we need to have these conversations. Thanks so much for being a part of the show. Good night. Good luck. God bless this amazing nation of ours called Kenya with so much hope. Gentlemen.